so this one is possibly a little more casual than the earlier paper that Dr. Biden and I presented. Um, so in addition to some of the, all three of us are in the Department of Journalism and Strategic Media here at the university. In addition to some of the other things that I do, I'm also our Assistant Director of Graduate Studies. And so a couple of years ago, one of our big charges as a department, something we were thinking a lot about, was how to increase engagement with our graduate students. We have both on-campus and online graduate students. Um, our, all of our graduate students take classes synchronously, which means they take it together. Um, the online students use uh, BlueJeans, which is a platform kind of like Skype, to come into class. Um, but because there were students sitting in front of us and then people on the computer, it, it got difficult to bring them together. So, one of the things that um, I suggested was this idea of having Twitter chats in order to bring everybody in the graduate department together, faculty as well. And so that's what we've done uh, for the last two years. We've done, uh, last night was actually our eighth chat. Uh, which was pretty fun we do to a semester. So it's been pretty good. And so that's what the paper is going to be about today, is we're going to talk to you about that. Um, we ended up, so we did, at the time of the paper, we had done seven chats. And we decided, well, it's probably about time to see whether or not we've actually increased engagement. How do the students feel about this? We knew how the faculty felt, but then what is it that the students think? So we took a mixed methods approach to figuring out how graduate education and engagement combined. So how are you taking what you're learning in the classroom and connecting it to what you're talking about with your peers? How are you taking what you're talking about with your peers and bringing it into the classroom, right? To have sort of a better and more well-rounded experience and then hoping that the Twitter chat would be able to do that. So a little bit about some of the lit that informed what we were talking about. There's this idea that in order to have sort of this connection and to have a well-rounded education, we need both tacit knowledge and explicit knowledge, right? So explicit knowledge is the idea that like two plus two equals four, or this particular person came up with this theory, right? It's sort of the basic facts of whatever you're studying. The tacit knowledge is more like what professor is going to tell the best jokes or have the best gifts in class, right? Um, or where might I go to do like fun things around campus, right? And then in order to have the best and most well-rounded education, we need both. And we need people to act as guides, right? So not really language Sherpas, um, but maybe maybe uh, grad school friend Sherpas, right? To help us move through what it is that we're doing in that. Uh, and then we know that there are some benefits to Twitter chats. Um, most social media engagement work has been done on undergrads. And so we wanted to see whether or not that research would translate to graduate students. So we know that Twitter chats are great for a variety of learning styles. We know that Twitter chats are really good at helping you network with a variety of students and instructors and in bringing out some of that personal side to the instructors which could then hopefully we were hoping would make it easier for students to come to us with questions or to talk to us about what it is that they were facing as a problem and then to get some experience building those social media based relationships we are again a, part, a department of journalism and social media and, or strategic media um, but building those social media based relationships becomes really important is something that we as a department think is necessary. And so Dr. Bird is going to talk to you a little bit about what we did. Okay, cool. I thought you were going to be like the designated turn. Oh, I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just that one. Okay, cool. Okay, because I can see things going backwards. So we had three research questions for our study. Uh, research question one uh, How are Twitter chats used to connect and engage graduate students? with their department. I think it was, I guess, not like Research question two, how do students make sense of the Twitter chat as part of their graduate education? And research question three, how do students make sense of the Twitter chats as part of their engagement with the graduate school community? So to answer these, we had a bit of a mixed me uh, method, not message, method. Um, so we had a, a qualitative component here where we actually looked at the tweets from the Twitter chat. So we had from the seven chats we've had, we've had a little over 1,700 tweets um, and 32 unique participants, which is graduate students as well as faculty, and sometimes just the random person that might pop up that likes what we're talking about. Um, that happens from time to time, and it's kind of weird, but it's fun, I guess. Maybe that was a way to recruit, maybe. Um, but we also, uh, the three of us memoed about our own experiences with the Twitter chats and kind of how we felt, what we experienced, what we thought about. <laughs> chats and we use that as part of our qualitative analysis 
And then our quantitative component, we uh, gave a post-only survey. So this was just after um, the seventh chat we gave the survey out. Um, it was online and we used a national, we kind of combined and adapted the national survey of student engagement and a sense of belonging skill. And then we asked open-ended questions to add to the so what we came up with, um, so for our um, research question one on, uh, let me go back, how, did, uh, how Twitter chats are used to connect and engage students, graduate students with their department. Um, so I think this quote kind of sums it up really well, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. As an online student, uh, this is from a student um, in the qualitative portion of the survey. This is their answer. As an online student, chats connect me more so than any other offered activity outside of the classroom. It reinforces the community, community connection that I am in fact a member of this college community and not just an outsider looking at dozens of email, emails of things I can't attend or participate in because I can't attend classes on location. So this is an online student that said this. So I think for our online students, there was this access that they didn't have before to the personal. So they had access before to the emails and the kind of the nuts and bolts of the class, but now they had access to the personal. Um, and also, they had access to this tacit knowledge um, that they weren't going to get otherwise. Um, so, on the in the chats, they asked things like, you know, what's one piece of advice you would give me um, going into this program, or what class should I take for this, or um, is this ever going to be offered online? To things like that. So it was they wouldn't get that, and they wouldn't really know how to ask that otherwise. But in these chats that are really loose, um, they could throw that out there, um, and then other students can answer. Faculty can answer. Um, the other thing, explicit knowledge, and students, I use this a lot to ask very direct questions about technical things, like how do I do this form, how do I fill out this form? That was a uh, kind of the discussion one night about how to fill out forms for a project or something like that, um, or where to get information about certain things, right? So very technical things. Um, and then also about class, too, so they'll ask questions about specific things about classes, too. And then inter integrating knowledge across classes. So a lot of times, Dr. Janowski um, is really good about uh, asking questions that make them think. And then they have to use things from multiple classes. But it's fun. So it's like we tricked them into learning a little bit, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, research question two, um, which dealt with how uh, students make sense of the Twitter chat as part of their, as part of their graduate education, which is uh, really interesting. Um, so they consider these stronger connections overall, along with peer building, uh, building peer relationships and faculty relationships as part of their educational experience as well. So one uh, really good quote from the uh, qualitative portion of the survey, I haven't seen how the Twitter chats are brought into the classroom. Um, they feel like separate time frames that are used to really get to know the department. I don't mind that. I like having a space where this is fun and this is work. But we learn from both, which is really interesting because at first, like, I don't see how it comes with the classroom, but we learn. So there again, we're being really sneaky about teaching, um, which we like. Um, so it's kind of like sneaking vegetables in with the ice cream, right? Like, you know. um, so they're learning, but they don't, they're don't. they having fun doing it. They don't realize it. But anyway, so it's kind of interesting to see this bigger engagement as their education. So we'll pass it off to Dr. Matthew. And so for the third research question, just a reminder, that one was about how graduate students make sense of their engagement in the graduate student community, in the graduate school community. And one big area was the interaction with faculty. Um, and this wasn't just students interacting with faculty as sort of a one-way channel. The quote here is from my own memoing about being a first-year assistant professor, having my first graduate class, and how I was able to use these Twitter chats to connect with students in a different way, learn about them, and from those Twitter chats, getting a uh, glimpse into the personality of students, particularly ones I hadn't had in class before, how I was able to draw that knowledge into the classroom. Um, so really working both ways, from students to faculty and faculty to students. It was also seen in this engagement portion as the ability to have a little bit of fun. Like we were talking about, you know, learning is fun and learning is the part of this fun. But because these weren't super structured, these weren't like a Q&A, like right or wrong answer, they were very much discussion, there could be a lot of fun with that. Um, my students, several students in here know I love gifts. Um, so that's certainly a part of these chats and sort of out gifting each other. That's a new, I haven't coined that phrase. Um, so because of this, two people could be active participants in the community talking about this. Um, 
being able to participate in discussions, especially students that maybe are shyer in class or again, they may feel disconnected because they're online. It's an equal playing field for people to participate and become a part of that discussion. But sort of the flip side of that, and of course, you know, with everything, some students, again, felt the, the potential to be bored by this or to be overpowered by other voices. Um, so there's just something to be aware of and trying to draw people out who maybe haven't spoken before. And um, Dr. Genasi does a great, great job of that as moderator, sort of drawing people into the conversation and making sure people are contributing. So what we can learn from this is it is possible to use social media to create rich and meaningful relationships um, between faculty and students, students and faculty, and students and students. So some of our lessons learned from this and our findings are that combination between online and offline engagement is, important, is an important mix here. And what was interesting is that sort of the offline portion, even for our online students, was online in these Twitter chats. So like they were saying, I can't go to this cool lecture at the University of Memphis because I live in North Carolina, but this is sort of my offline engagement space. And again, that was an important part of this. Engagement is education, and as we even saw in the results um, with the importance of relationships with faculty, you know, eating their vegetables in this fun area, of the, you know, th thinking about that, um, very much engagement was education, and education was engagement for students with these chats. Um, keeping our chats weird was important, like again, like sort of that humor, social support was all an important function of this, as well as skill building. So again, we are a department of journalism and strategic media, so it, we, we use social media a lot. Uh, so this is just practicing using that platform, practicing networking. Um, and also practicing um, building your own personal brand online. So all of that was part of these chats as well. So um, all of you, we encourage you, faculty, department chairs, like get, get involved with Twitter and make this a part of your department. Uh, I'll just go over a couple of tips here, but just jump in, do it. Developing a hashtag is going to be key, um, and one that's sort of memorable and one that you use consistently to keep this a part of that community function. Um, thinking about having icebreakers, discussion topics, um, and having a core group of participants. So one key thing, too, I want to make sure we mention is that we will sort of take turns having Twitter chats as part of a graduate class. So from 7.30 to 8.30 time span, that will be a class's sort of job to like do this Twitter chat. So you have a core participant group, and then other graduate students are encouraged and invited to chat along with us. So that's an important part of this. Um, it's important that faculty engage too. We see that as one of the most important components of this was that engagement between student and faculty, like being able to learn from them and see those relationships being built. Um, and although we sort of play this fast and loose, it is important to have a moderator. Um, like I said, Dr. Janowski does a great job of keeping us in track, making sure this engagement is happening, and making sure this is a fun part of the experience for everybody. So. Find us on Twitter, join us, chat with us, um, and if you're interested, follow along at Neiman Grad and be one of those strangers who hops in our conversations. <laughs> Thanks.